27 running shoes tested, nine award categories. This is the Running Shoe Awards 2023. So it's that time of year again where I bring all the running shoes that I've tested into one big video where I produce my very own running awards. Now there are nine categories as I mentioned, four shoes in each category that I feel deserve to be up there and nominated for award. There is one category with a couple more shoes but we'll talk about that when we get there. There'll be two honourable mentions, one runner up and one winner of each category rolling all the way through to the final shoe of the year. So if you're excited for this video guys make sure you give it a like, share it with your friends and of course subscribe to the channel for weekly running content. Let's start with the first category which is the long run category. And the nominations for the long run shoe of the year go to the Brooks Hyperion Max, the Saucony Ride 17, the Puma Deviate Nitro Elite 2 and the Hoka Mac X. And we'll start with the two honourable mentions. The Ride 17 will come in sort of last place just because I've only done one long run in it but it absolutely blew me away when I was out there on the long run and I can see myself getting plenty more long run miles in this shoe. One of the most enjoyable long runs I've had all year. Sticks in the memory very well and when I look back at some of the other shoes I've tested this one's stands out above the rest. So this has to go up there. And as I said, if I had more time this year, this one would probably be up there for a contender of the win. The Puma Deviate Nitro Elite 2, done a couple of long runs in this shoe now and longer run workouts and it absolutely excels. I've mentioned this year how much I've enjoyed this shoe and again I've run 90 minutes to 1 hour 45 in it and it's been absolutely beautiful. Slight calf stiffness at the end which just stops it from really being a proper contender but overall the ride and the run feel in general has been excellent. So that then brings us on to the Hoka Mac X and the Brooks Hyperion Max. Which one takes the win? Well I think you guys know it's going to be the Brooks Hyperion Max for the long run shoe of the year. I did so many marathon pace long runs, marathon long runs in general. In this shoe, it was absolutely excellent. To be honest with you, it stands out head and shoulders uh, above all the rest. But the Mac X has been a, a second favorite for me. Uh, the one that I've gravitated towards the most since receiving it, which hasn't been that long. I mean, I look at all the shoes that I've tested this year. This one has to be right up there as one of my favorites. It definitely excels in that moderate to marathon pace effort. Um, especially more around the moderate effort and running long in it has never been an issue at all. I've done two or three long runs in it now this year and it's been absolutely stupendous. But as I said, the Brooks Hyperion Max takes it. I must have done 10 plus long runs in this shoe. Absolutely incredible and nothing will beat this one in this category. And now we move on to the second category, the speed day category, the shoes that I'm using for my interval workouts, the one that have really excelled when it comes to speed. We're looking at the Adidas Takumi Sen 9, the Brooks Hyperion Max, the On Cloud Flow 4, and the Saucony Kinvara 14. And these guys are going to get the honourable mentions in this category, the Brooks Hyperion Max and the On Cloud Flow 4. Um, this one has, is absolutely incredible. As I've said in many videos, I really don't have a weakness for it, but that top end speed, I can get a little bit better from some of the other two finalists in particular the Kinvara and the Takumi they're just a bit lighter and I just feel like I can turn over faster in them and that's what I'm looking for this is absolutely brilliant but in this scenario those two shoes I think are slightly better the on cloud flow 4 this has been a bit of a revelation for me it's the heaviest one in this category but it certainly does shift. Out of the 55 or 60 miles I've put in this thing so far, uh, basically all of it's been speed work. I think I've done one moderate run and the rest has all been workouts. I've really enjoyed it. I don't quite get top end speed in it, which is why it's on the honorable mentions. I haven't quite been able to really, really push that top end pace. But as for sort of half marathon paces up to 10K, it's been really solid. Which moves us on to the finalists, the Adidas Takumi Sen 9 and the Saucony Kinvara 14. And this has been genuinely the hardest decision out this whole award ceremony because um, while I was using the Takumi for 134 miles it was incredible but this cut out here and the midsole um, in the medial side here it just meant that my arch was collapsing in too much I was getting leg pain and it just didn't work for me in the first hundred miles it felt okay but just towards the end I noticed my foot was excessively collapsing inwards and I got to around 120 130 miles and I just couldn't use it anymore Contrasting that, the Saucony Kinvara, which I've got just over 50 miles in, I'm feeling exactly the same feeling in this thing, but it's not collapsing in because I don't have any sort of cutout in this medial arch area. It's flat throughout and it's feeling really good. 
So with that in mind, despite the fact that I put 134 miles in this and only 50 in this one, I feel like this is going to give me a little bit more life and I'm going to get past 134. Therefore, I'm going to give the win to the Kinvara 14. Really didn't think when I picked this shoe up earlier this year that anything would beat it in this category, but I'm finding exactly the same feeling, same propulsion, same explosiveness in this shoe as I do in the Takumis. Massively underrated, not talked about enough. This one takes the win. And let's now move on to the daily trainer category. We've got the Saucony Ride 17, the Hoka Clifton 9, the Saucony Triumph 21, and the Brooks Hyperion Max. And these two are gonna take the honorable mentions. The Clifton, oh, I wish it had just lasted a little bit longer. Like, it's, I could still run in it and it's absolutely fine, but I do feel like the foam has gone a little bit dead, even after just 100 miles. It's got plenty of life left in it, but it lost what little pop it had. But what I found with this shoe that really attracted me to it, and why it got to 100 miles so quickly, was its lightweight nature. Now Hoka's really work well for me in terms of the shape of them, the, the geometry, the way my foot fits in them is just their foams that let them down. The Mac X has been the first one this year with that new Peeba base midsole that has really taken me aback with how good it is. Uh, but the Clifton, it was great start to life. I went for it so many times. Uh, and yes, the foam died out a little bit, but it's gotta be in here because I went for it so much. I gravitated towards it and it hit 100 miles very quickly. A very, very enjoyable ride while it lasted. The Saucony Triumph 21. An interesting one. I haven't put that many miles in it, but again, a shoe that when I started to wear it, I was like, wow, this is really, really comfy. I could use this more and more. Uh, and I, I did zone one and zone two stuff in it really, really well. I picked up the pace well in it, and I felt like this thing could definitely shift. And with a daily trainer that you want to be able to cover a lot of bases, I felt like this could be a really good option. And again, when I look at a lot of the easier and daily trainers, or maybe even max cushion trainers that I've tested, this one had more gears than some of the other shoes. So this one definitely deserves to be up there. So it then comes down to the Saucony Ride 17 and the Brooks Hyperion Max. And I will just say with the Ride 17, again, I've only put three or four runs in it so far, but my word, isn't this a good shoe? This has really blown me away since I've got it. A massive change to the Ride 16. Uh, and I'm really loving it. This is one of the shoes this year that has captured the imagination of me very quickly. And again, doing a multitude of paces in its very first long run was amazing. Definitely, that's what a daily train is all about. It's something you can go from easy and really go through the gears through. This thing did that with aplomb. The Brooks Hyperion Max though, again, has got to take the win. I covered so many bases with this shoe. Um, easy, all the way up to 10K paces. This thing sailed through it all. Lightweight package, firmer midsole. Nothing more to be said about it. This thing covers it all amazingly. And it's my daily trainer of the year. Moving swiftly on to the max cushion shoe of the year. Six of shoes in this category, this is the exception. And for me, I've classed this as 37 millimeters of stack height and above uh, from the heel, I should say, and it's not a super shoe. There are six shoes in this category, so I can't hold them all. We're gonna go through the four honorable mentions and then I'll show you the two winners. The Puma Forever Run Nitro and the Puma Magnify Nitro 2, both solid offerings from Puma. Both really great shoes. 113-ish miles, I think I've put in it, about 20-something in this one. Um, this one hasn't got a look in, which is a real shame because it deserves more. It is a really, really enjoyable shoe. This one did get a lot of uh, mileage, and it was really, really good. The max cushion category for me is the least exciting because I don't put that many miles in max cushion shoes, but from what I tested, these two were great. The Brooks Ghost Max and the Nova Blast 4. The only reason why this isn't up for some kind of category win or an award is because I've only put two runs in it. That's it so far. So if I'd have got a few more runs in it, maybe things would be different I'm pretty sure they'd be different but I can't give it anything after just two runs so the Nova Blast 4 comes in here with the highest stack of all these shoes at 41.5 in the heel and the Brooks Ghost Max a really enjoyable shoe for me better than the Brooks Ghost 15 I preferred this I preferred what the DNA Loft version 2 midsole was doing in this one there was more of it felt more cushioned you couldn't pick up the pace in it but it was a really really enjoyable shoe and that leaves these two the on cloud eclipse it should be that way around and the the uh, Asics Gel Cumulus 25. The runner-up is going to be the On Cloud Eclipse. I haven't put as many miles in it yet, but from what I have put in it, I have loved it. This is a really solid shoe from On. On have really surprised me this year, and this one did not disappoint. Very comfortable, gives you something back, responsive foam, as well as being nice and cushioned. This one is right up there, and that's what I'm looking for in a running shoe, a little bit of responsiveness. But the win goes to the Asics Gel 
Gel Cumulus 25. Nearly 100 miles, might be 100 miles by the time you're seeing this review. Um, this has been phenomenal, I've loved it, I've used it so much. For a max cushion shoe, it's lightweight, well, not light, but it's on the lighter side, and it's a really enjoyable ride, and you've got that responsiveness with the Flight Foam Blast Plus midsole. This is a gem, massively underrated, overshadowed by the Nimbus. This thing is well worth a try. Now on to the trail shoe of the year. I've actually tested two trail shoes. One of them is not here with me, um, and I will disclose that right now. We've got the North Face Summit Vective, and we have the Nike Terrakiga 9. I dislike the Terrakiga 9 so much that I didn't review it, and it has never left my shed since. I've used it for walking in frosty conditions. It's a very comfortable walking shoe, but it put on quite a bit of weight from version 8 in my size, and it just was not enjoyable. I think I put one, five, Five mile run in it and that was it it was sent to me by nike and i was very grateful but to be honest with you it, it was not my cup of tea when it comes down to the north face vective though this was a great shoe a plated shoe you can see here here's the plate with wings um some decent ish grip uh not the most you're not going to get great grip running through thick mud but on light trails this was great i put a decent well not a decent amount of miles but i put three or four runs in it about 20 to 30 miles, some good length runs, a 90 minute run and some other ones. And I really enjoyed it. This was a breath of fresh air. Never really tried a carbon plated trail shoe and this did really well. I would actually be keen to try version two when that's out next year. And then we move on to an exciting one, the racing shoe category of the year. We've got the Saucony Endorphin Elite, we've got the Puma Deviate Nitro Elite 2, the On Cloud Boom Echo 3, and the Nike Vaporfly 3. And the two honourable mentions go to the Puma Deviate Nitro Elite 2 and the On Cloud Boom Echo 3. I put some solid miles in each of these shoes, but I have really reserved them for training. I just kind of feel like the other two shoes are kind of a step up from these two, but I've really enjoyed them. The On offering here has been great. If I had to order them, I'd probably say this would be third place and this would be fourth um, but this one has been used more in training if I'm honest with you I love them both I think I do prefer this one over this one but both of them have been great training companions but in terms of racing you really can't go wrong with either of them if you don't have the Nike or the Saucony they just don't quite match up to those two shoes because for me I feel like these two brands are really are taking the racing shoe uh, sort of space by the scruff of the neck obviously I haven't tried any New Balance I haven't tried the Asics mainly because Asics don't do my racing shoe size but I was really surprised I mean the win in this category goes to the Saucony Endorphin Elite and that's simply because I never thought a racing shoe would knock off a Nike shoe from my podium I always use the Vaporfly version 1 or the Alpha Fly version 1 uh, but this thing has come along and has absolutely knocked them off top spot and I would now choose over any racing shoe this one all day long been an absolute favorite this one was a decent upgrade from Nike it's still not what the Vaporfly version 1 was that shoe is in a league of its own and it's the most closest shoe that I would use to this one. So like if I didn't have this one, I would use my version ones. But I have raced a couple of times in this one this year. It's done all right. It's a good option. Again, it's a step up from the other two shoes, but it's not quite what the Endorphin Elite is. Now to a controversial category, the Running Shoe Flop Award of the Year, the shoe that really just hasn't done it for me. And there are three shoes in this one, the Brooks Ghost 15, the Brooks Hyperion, and the Saucony Ride 16. Now these two are the honorable mentions. It's a bit unfair for me to say this is a flop. It's the first time I've ever been in the uh, Brooks Ghost lineup. I just wasn't a massive fan, uh, to be honest with you. It was a good, comfortable, easy day shoe. Uh, it's a foam that is comfortable, nice and soft, but not responsive in the slightest. I didn't feel like I got any propulsion and it was a lot on the heavier side compared to some of the other shoes that had soft and comfortable midsoles but also weren't responsive. This was the heaviest of the bunch and so I never really gravitated towards it again. The Brooks Hyperion is another one that I just kind of felt a little bit let down by. It's a shoe that's meant to kind of marry up with or match up alongside something like the New Balance SC Pacer, maybe the Puma Liberate Nitro. Um, just a lower stack, lower profile, not racing shoe, but training shoe. Um, and it was just a bit too low profile for me. The, the foam in this, obviously, that's the same in the Max. Um, because there's less of it, it doesn't quite have that same energy return, I feel, as the uh, Hyperion Max. And therefore, again, when I tested it a couple of times, I didn't really enjoy it that much. But I will remove this one from my feet because it is now my walking shoe the ride 16 definitely for me was a flop of the year Com completely contrasting what the 17 has done because that's changed foams 
The 15 to the 16 was about a 20 to 25 gram weight gain with really no difference to anything bar the upper. The foam is exactly the same and the foam is already relatively heavy and dense. It was all right in the 15 because the, uh, the shoe in general was quite light so you could move in it well. But I felt like with the weight gain in this thing, it just made it just completely a little bit lifeless and something that I didn't really want to run in at all. So for me, this was the flop, a massive contrast to the 17. And just before we get on to the final category, I want to give some honourable mentions, some shout outs to some shoes that haven't really quite made it in the categories or have, but only just, but deserved a little bit more. I'm just going to start off with the Magic Speed 2. This isn't a 2023 release, but I did get it in 2023. So I didn't want to include it into any of these awards because really it should be the Magic Speed 3. But I did put some decent miles in it, about 40 or 50 miles so far. And I really, really enjoyed it. The Speed 3 is another one that I would love to have tested. Um, I haven't got round to it at the moment, but I just wanted to shout this one out to some really good long runs in it some good speed sessions this was a great upgrade from version one which was kind of okay but not great um, I feel like the Vaporfly 3 deserves a bit of an extra honourable mention. Um, a decent shoe, as I said, a good upgrade. It was good to feel that squish back similar to what you get in the version 1. It just doesn't quite have that propulsiveness, but I have used it a lot in training as well. So not just racing, two decent races in it. Well, one race that wasn't great, but one that was decent. Um, got me a podium at my local race. So I was pretty happy. And again, I like what they've done with the midsole. Uh, the upper, I still wish they go back to the vapor weave. And it doesn't quite have that same oomph that the, uh, the version one does, but I still feel it deserves a little bit of an extra shout, especially considering Nike are doing absolutely naffle when it comes to their daily trainer offerings. They're just terrible compared to every, every other brand that's really putting their effort into every other shoe other than racing. The Ride 17, it's appeared a few times in the video, just like I talked about the 16. I just wanna give this a shout out. Again, I feel like alongside the Kinvara 14, if this had had more time, I think the Kinvara 14 might have won another award. This probably would have won an award. Uh, this is magic. I've got it late on, but my word, this is good. Stay tuned for this one. If you can grab it, this is well worth it. And the Puma Magnify Nitro 2. I was gutted that I haven't put more miles in this shoe, to be honest with you. This one, does, out of all the shoes, this one deserves more miles. This was a really comfortable shoe. You guys gave great feedback on it. I loved it. I have only put two or three runs in it, as I said. It's just because there was plenty of other shoes for me to be testing at the time. But I kind of feel like I've let this shoe down and not done it justice. It's one of the ones I wish I'd really pushed to 100 miles. I just didn't get around to it. So those are some honorable mentions. And then we move on to my running shoe of the year. Now, I'm sure a lot of you know what's coming here, but trust me, these top four were really hard to choose from. The top two were pretty darn clear cut, but the other two, there were so many good shoes that I've tested this year, but I really want to highlight these two in particular. So it was a really tough call between the Saucony Kinvara 14, the Hoka Mac X and the Ride 17 uh, for, to get into this category. And really, I'd have loved to have pushed the 17 in there. But as I said, just because I've put sort of three or four runs in there, I don't feel like it's given me enough quite yet uh, to really deserve to be up in this category but these two I've put enough miles in to safely say that I feel like these are absolute gems I haven't had this too long but over 50 miles already every single workout in this shoe has been a dream I've not had one bad workout in it the shoe has worked with me every single time it is absolutely brilliant you don't hear people talk about it enough I don't think because the speed lineup uh, so the, uh, the 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 shift, the speed, and the pro lineup take the show when it comes to Saucony. But the Convara 14 is so remodeled since it's 11, which I previously tested and hated with a passion. We've got more stack height, the foam feels lighter, it's more responsive, more pop, still a firmer ride. But my word, don't you shift in this shoe. The Mac X, again, I've had it so little time, but nearly 100 miles already. This is brilliant from Hoka. I really want to see more. I've seen lots of snippets from the running event over in Austin, Texas, and I'm gutted to see that they're still sticking to EVA in a lot of their shoes, albeit they've moved to super critical EVA. But my word, when won't they wake up and uh, smell the coffee that this PIBA stuff is what they should be using. This is transforming the Rocket X2 He's putting them on the map with that racing shoe and he's putting this shoe on the map. Whether you got on with this shoe or not, it's great to see that they're using a more up-to-date foam that's gonna last longer than their EVA stuff. So that then leaves the top two and this was clear cut between these two, like as in these two I knew were always gonna be up there for shoe of the year. 
Really, the Sulkley Endorphin Elite blew me away with the fact that, as I said earlier, it knocked the Nike racing shoes off top spot. I've not found anything uh, in a couple of years of testing since the version one Vaporfly that's really got close bar the Sulkley Endorphin Pro 3, and that was pretty darn close, but not quite as good as the Vaporfly. But this thing did it. I never thought I'd see it, but it has, and it's now my favorite. So wow, what a shoe. But as you know, the shoe of the year is going to go to the Brooks Hyperion Max. Now, I believe the Tempo was up there uh, last year, maybe, or the year before. I can't remember, but I love the Brooks Hyperion Tempo. And this Max is a great upgrade. I won't keep waffling on about it. I'm going to bullet point this. It works amazingly from easy all the way through to top end pace. You've just got such a good range. Firmer comfort. Um, but it is comfortable, firmer ride I should say, but really comfortable uh, and it just is a lightweight package. Again, gutted to see that version 2 is going to have a Piba based plate in it. I don't want to play, I love this shoe as it is, I love the fact we've got good stack, very responsive foam and get a lot of your runs done in a non-plated shoe, it's wonderful. This shoe absolutely, hands down, wins shoe of the year. So my final thoughts on the Running Shoe Awards 2023 and running shoes in general this year. There are three of them. Number one, Saucony, brand of the year. I mean, I don't know what to say. Other than the Ride 16, their shoes are just exceptional. They are, for me, paving the way for a lot of running shoe companies. Nike are lagging behind. I get so frustrated. They produce some of the best racing shoes and their rest of their daily trainer offerings and speed day shoes are atrocious. They're not even close to anything that I've tested here this year. So they're fantastic. Number two, the Brooks Hyperion Max. I think I knew this was gonna be shoe of the year back when I got it in February. I labeled it as a daily trainer of the year in 2023. That was one of my biggest viewed videos on the channel and I stick by it. It has been absolutely incredible. I've bought a second pair and I'm already starting to use them for my London Marathon training block next year. And finally, number three, the Ride 17 and the Nova Blast 4. Two shoes that I just wish I'd had a month earlier to really get them into this video. The Ride 17 in particular, what a change, what a change that is. A triumph, but better for me. And I love the triumph, that's why I put it in the category because although I haven't done that many runs in it, that Power Run Plus is such a good midsole. The fact that the, the Ride 17 now has dropped it, to, well no, sorry, it's still an eight millimeter drop as per the 16 and the 15, uh, but compared to the Triumph, which is a 10, eight's more natural to me, so it just works really well. And the news coming out is that the Triumph 22 is gonna have Power Run PB, which is what we see in the speeds. So that's incredible. So we can see where things are shifting. The ride's getting the Power Run Plus, the Triumph is getting the Power Run PB. And for me, as a massive Saucony fan, I could not ask for more. It is gonna be exciting in 2024 for Saucony. So those are my final thoughts on the Running Shoe Awards. And as always, guys, I'd love to hear from you down in the comments below, especially if you've made it this far into the video. What's your favorite uh, shoe of the year, what's your favorite categories? Can you list the running shoe awards like I have? You don't have to go into all the detail that I did with all the categories, but if you've got two or three categories that you feel you've had some standout shoes in, do share it with everyone. We all have different tastes. You've got to remember, I'm six foot six, around 87 kilograms. I'm a very different profile runner to somebody else. So yeah, my taste in shoes is going to be completely different to you. I'd love to hear what yours are. It'd be great to share them down there. That is it for another year of running shoe reviews and of course the running shoe awards i appreciate you guys sticking around to the end of the video if you enjoyed it please do give it a like share it with your friends and of course subscribe to the channel for weekly running content i'll see you in the next one until then